Thank you, thank you, Regent Putnam, Regent Portnoy, Regent Higaki. This is, um, it seems odd, but it's a matter of timing, but I haven't quite made five years as president, and this is my fourth board chair, and the first time we've had a complete change of officers, so uh, next year will be different. Um, this has been a fantastic week. Um, for our Kakaago campus. Uh, Saturday night, we celebrated the um, renewal of the National Cancer Institute, or NCI, designation for our cancer center uh, that had been pre-announced at our, our last meeting, which was at the cancer center. Um, at the celebration, we had key supporters, policymakers, um, of course, donors. And I want to thank the regions who were able to attend, uh, Region Portnoy, Region Putnam, Region Tagorda, Region Higa. Um, it was much appreciated, and we had a very nice mix of both research, uh, speeches, and celebration uh, shared that evening. Um, last night, uh, for those of you who saw the front page this morning, was also an amazing night um, with the $3.7 million from uh, three different donors the Weinman Foundation, uh, the Queen's Health Systems, and Hawaii Pacific Health. One third of our entering John A. Burns School of Medicine class will have their full tuition supported. Um, and that also frees up existing aid for other medical students. Uh, these are students who are committed to practice in Hawaii. Uh, the Weinmans did this once before, I think a little over um, 10 years ago, for 10 students. And one of those students was there last night and I'll just share this story. Um, when he was in training after medical school on the mainland, uh, he met his wife who was also in training, who was not from Hawaii. Um, he brought her back with him, and they are now both practicing primary care medicine in central Oahu. So we got a twofer out of that one, and I'm hopeful that we can uh, do similarly with these 23. The other thing, um, that I observed in talking with some of these students. Um, these are not, um, this allowed us to compete for some of the best and brightest local students who were going to medical school but not necessarily coming here. They uh, all had offers, many of them had offers at other places at very good medical schools, but um, this offer of free tuition for four years put them over the top. So we will not just be getting 23 doctors committed to practice in Hawaii, but we'll get, be getting excellent doctors committed to practice in Hawaii. What is most amazing to me, and those of you who have been around for a while, um, t 20 years ago, even less, there was nothing in Kaka'ako. Today, we have a state-of-the-art campus, modern facilities, world-class programs that are inspiring and earning support from multiple sources, and that's a remarkable testament to the, the people who put their hearts and minds and souls <coughs> into it. Um, Chair Sullivan said a little bit about the foundation, and, and this will come up also in the Permitted Interaction Group report on the agenda, um, but let me just give a quick update that the search for a successor to Donna Vucinich is actively underway. We are using a search firm. Uh, UH Foundation Chair Catherine Noe and I are in very regular conversation, weekly calls with the search firm re re reviewing prospects, and we remain um, optimistic and positive that we'll be identifying someone who can join us and um, help take us to the next level in philanthropy uh, by the end of this year. We are also now beginning work on a new uh, agreement between the University of Hawaii and the UH Foundation. And our theme is really to focus on how to break down walls and silos between the organization that make us less effective than we think we could be in this broader mission of advancement, as the industry term goes. And we're looking at an agreement that is more of a partnership relationship rather than the current agreement, which probably, if you looked at it, you would think uh, um, refers to a vendor relationship as if the University of Hawaii is outsourcing fundraising to a, a separate organization. Um, without stealing thunder, I'll just say that our, um, our research dollars are up this year, reversing a few years of decline. Vice President Sirmos is out of town and he'll come back with the full details. Um, our extramural enterprise employs 
over 10,000 people in Hawaii throughout the islands. So it's a pretty substantial enterprise serving this state. I'll just highlight a couple of particularly notable um, awards, I think. Um, one was an award from the WM Keck Foundation. So this is a really interesting foundation. Uh, it's only a million dollars, so it's not huge. But they are noted for recognizing cutting edge, high risk, high reward science that often can't be funded by federal agencies, which tend to be more risk averse. Um, this recognizes the capacity that we've built in the microbiome. And you heard from Margaret McFall Nye um, about a year ago about the shifts in biology. And she's also spoken at some of our foundation events. But this is a really important new area and one in which UH has strength. This is our second major award from them in just a year. The last one was to build a Haydal water column profiler that's helping look uh, ocean sampling up to six miles down to sample the ocean floor, which has never been done before. Um, our new project is looking at, uh, it also leverages the uniqueness of Hawaii. And it's allowing us to essentially establish a microbiome observatory um, in Wa Waimea Valley, looking at the entire watershed, or Ahupua'a, to uh, map the microbiome of both the flora and fauna along this continuous uh, ecological gradient to identify the patterns of the micro microbial community. Um, and we think this has never been done before anywhere. And it should um, provide great insights into um, understanding the microbes in ecological systems. And we look to create predictive models and a theoretical framework for understanding that. Um, this is also just one last comment about this one, uh, because I think it's so notable. Uh, Margaret McFall Nye, who is one of our National Academy uh, uh, scientists, um, while she is the lead, she's working with and mentoring an amazing interdisciplinary team of some of our best young scholars from multiple departments who are really carrying out the work. And this is the kind of project that really bodes well for our future and establishes our foundations for uh, an ever more impactful as well as productive research enterprise. Um, at the same time, while that's leading edge and probably won't change any lives within the next 10 years, um, we do have many of our scientists and researchers who are focused on the problems that we face today. Um, a recent study that just came out last week uh, looks at the impact of climate change on uh, rat lungworms, the actual worms. And we know as a result of this research that rat lungworms will be tending up toward higher elevations as the climate warms. We've seen similar um, impacts with mosquitoes and uh, mosquito-borne disease as well. Um, the directives you may have seen issued by Mayor Caldwell to city departments uh, on how Honolulu needs to take action to address and minimize the risks from and adapt to climate change. Those are based on the recommendations from the Honolulu Climate Change Commission, five members of whom three are UH Manoa faculty, including the chair and vice chair. So that's how we are impacting policy based on our research. Our um, ATLAS system, some of you may remember if you visited the observatories on Maui, um, ATLAS is our asteroid terrestrial impact last alert system, um, had its first hit uh, last week where it identified an incoming space rock about five hours before it came into the atmosphere. This one was tiny, it was about six feet. But what is important, and this is two telescopes, one on Maui and one on Mauna Loa, is that uh, there was enough advance warning and the prediction of where it would hit was good enough that it could have resulted in an evacuation to protect people from a larger uh, object that may have um, actually caused grave harm to human life. So this is um, um, the kind of thing that literally um, can save lives. Um, Lastly, in this portion, let me say something about um, when we talk about our mission as teaching, research, and service. Um, I am struck, and I've commented before on the work of our scientists at both UH Hilo and UH Manoa in responding to the Kilauea um, uh, volcanic events. Um, the other side of this is the human part of it. And uh, even though school is not in session, our Hawaii Community College culinary and agriculture students and faculty are actively engaged in feeding evacuees. Um, the ag students, faculty, and staff are growing and harvesting produce 
at our Pana Eva site um, in East Hawaii. And then that's being used by our culinary arts students, faculty, and staff several times a week to prepare multiple meals for as many as 300 people. And they're coordinating that with the Salvation Army to get those meals into the hands of people, the mouths of people who um, really need them. Let me shift uh, for a moment and just give you a quick update on the Mauna Kea rules. Um, at the last meeting, you approved us uh, requesting the governor's approval to conduct public hearings. Um, we have to take that to the small business regulatory and blah, blah board, our, uh, SPRRB. Um, they unanimously agreed to approve us moving forward into public hearing. They did give us some homework, which um, we're taking to heart. Um, and we got approval on July 10th, what it, which is record time from the governor to actually go out to public hearings. Uh, we did have to make a couple minor revisions uh, as a result of the new law that was enacted uh, that makes all UH premises non-smoking. So we had to address that in the rules. We took the liberty of doing so with the help of our uh, Office of General Counsel. Um, four public hearings will be conducted, two on Hawaii Island, one on Oahu, and one on Maui. The sites are now being secured. Um, actually, only two sites are required, two hearings are required by law, but we really want to strive for transparency and community input, including on Maui, um, where there's a lot of interest in uh, astronomy as well on, um, on mountains. Uh, we are looking forward to having the public hearings in mid-September, hopefully before the board meeting on Kauai. I'm happy to report that after our uh, discussion at the last meeting, uh, Regents Akoba and Portnoy stepped up to the plate to agree to serve as hearing officers. If any other Regents are interested in serving as a hearing officer, <laughs> please let us know. There are openings, but Regents Moore and Kudo have agreed to serve as backups if nobody else uh, volunteers. We will have <laughs> professional court reporters, so you don't have to take the notes. Um, and we'll be staffing the hearing officers. Um, basically, the process is that based on the input at the hearings, um, we need to look back and see whether we would recommend substantial revisions to the rules. If there are substantial revisions, uh, the board would approve those, and then we would go back out for a second round of public hearings. Hopefully, it will take no more than two rounds, as we discussed last month. Then the rules would go back to the governor for adoption. Um, so the process could be completed as early as January 2019. If we go back for a second round, which we think is, is reasonably um, possible, um, that would probably add about another six months or so to the process. Um, so let me close with um, one of the fun things we get to do at these meetings, which is an award. Um, the President's Award for Excellence in Buildings and Ground Maintenance is given annually to an individual from somewhere in the system who has exhibited sustained superior performance in a maintenance, landscaping, custodial, or trucking position. And um, before we introduce this year's winner, um, I want to acknowledge the runner-up, Henry Yamaguchi. Um, who's the maintenance supervisor at commuter, commuter services here at Manoa, who passed away in November um, during the process. He was just 42 and uh, was well-loved and respected. So our condolences to his family, friends, and colleagues. This year's recipient is Ms. Jenny Sun. I think Jenny is here. Um, she works as a janitor here at uh, UH Manoa. She's in the um, Queen Liliu Okalani Center for Student Services. According to her many glowing recommendations, Jenny always goes, ab goes above and beyond her required job responsibilities. No office corner or doorknob or air conditioning vent is safe from her. <laughs> <laughs> Ant infestations or mold outbreaks, no problem. As one reference said, this woman does not give up. She's committed to keeping a safe and spotless working environment for those in her offices. Another reference says, he has never met a custodian so dedicated, so passionate, and so meticulous as Jenny. She demonstrates aloha in all that she does, is always willing to lend a hand to her coworkers and other departments. Her cheerful disposition, bright smile, and attention to detail make her a truly team, valued team player on the fourth floor of the Queen Liliu Okalani Center for Student Services. Congratulations, and thank you, Jenny, for your commitment to the Manoa campus. <laughs> <laughs> 